Live from Makuau on the beautiful island of Maui in the great state of Hawaii, it's it's not working again. There we go. It's Children's Dharma Story Time, starring Barclay the Dog and Lucy the Ladybug, with special guests Green Snoopy and Kermit the Gasho Frog. Hey ha! Good morning, children! Oh, how gazamus! It's me, Barclay the Dog. And since I just moved the mouse, so he can't see what he's doing. Okay, where are we? No, don't click on anything. Careful. Okay, yeah, okay, good morning, it's me, Barclay the dog, and this here is the love of my life. Lucy the ladybug. Aloha, Kako. Aloha for everyone. I'm Lucy the ladybug, and I'm delighted to make your acquaintance. Right there. Say, Lucy, why don't you put on the magic glasses and see all, see who's all here with us this fine morning? Mahalo, Barkley. It's always so much fun to see all the smiling faces of the wonderful children from around the world. Oh, look, I can see Benji and Tori and Kava and Lana and Nolan and Cora and Maddie all the way in Colorado. Hi, Maddie! And Jai and Ison and Cruz and Tide and Kenneth, Lindsay, Sierra, Wesley, Meliana and Lilinoi and Kaya and Emmy and Micah, Kalena, Tyrus and Melody and Cadence. Okay. And Sensei's mom, Ruby, in Southern California. Hi, mom. Uh, remember to call your mom, Sensei. Okay, I'll do that. And I can see our Dharma school teachers, Auntie Sharon and Auntie Karen, too. And we have Dharma buddies from around the world, from Canada, the mainland USA, Japan, China, Hong Kong, Singapore, Romania, Germany, France, Great Britain, and even Brazil on the other side of the world. Hey, Dan Sensei and Marcio Sensei, how y'all doing? Good to see ya. Hey, we looks like we got us a full house, yeah. Mahalo for tuning in. And we have a wonderful story for all the Dharma buddies, young and old. Cora Cook's Pansit, written by Dorina K. Lazo Gilmore, and illustrated by Christy Valiant. This book is dedicated as follows. For Rebecca Tarosian, who shared her family stories, and in memory of Grandma Cora Taklindo Lazo, who always welcomed me into the kitchen. And that's by DLG. The second dedication is for my husband, Casey, my favorite blessing, and for my mom, who shares all her recipes with me, except for the secret caramel one. And that's by KV. Cora loved the kitchen. She loved to drink in the smells of Mama's Filipino dishes. Cora's older sisters and brothers often helped with the cooking. They got the grown-up jobs like shredding the chicken and or mixing the noodles in the pot. They sliced vegetables and rolled lumpia into tidy egg roll shapes. Cora was stuck with kid jobs like drawing pictures in the flour or licking spoons. She longed to be a real cook. One day, Cora's three older sisters headed to the mall. Her brother darted outside with his ball glove. Now was her chance. Cora popped her head around the corner. What are we making today, Mama? Mama wiped her hands on the front of her red apron. She put her hands on her hips. What would you like to make today? asked Mama in her buttery voice. Cora was surprised Mama was letting her decide. She scrunched up her pug nose and began to think. All of her favorite Filipino foods danced in her head. Lines of lumpia pranced in rows. Adobo chicken legs bebopped in time. She saw a large bowl of pancit. The thought of noodles and vegetables curled and swirled in a dance party. Mm. Will you teach me to make pancit? she asked. Of course, said Mama. Would you like to wear my red apron? Cora was a real cook now. 
The apron was a little bit too big, but it would do. Mama helped Cora tie the strings around her back and make a neat bow at her belly button. This apron belonged to Lolo, your grandpa, said Mama. He wore it when he first came to California. He was a cook for the Filipino farm workers who picked strawberries and grapes in the fields. Did Lolo teach you how to cook? Cora wanted to know. He did, said Mama. I followed him each day into the big kitchen. He created all kinds of dishes uh, to fill the hungry workers' tummies. While he cooked, he told stories about the Philippines where he was born. Cora listened and nodded. Lolo told us about the countryside where he grew up. His family harvested pineapples, bananas, and papayas. He used to eat smashed bananas and sweet rice wrapped in banana leaves. Cora stuffed her hands in the deep apron pockets. She imagined Mama and Lolo cooking together. She saw Lolo as a boy unwrapping the banana leaves and scooping the sweet rice from inside. Cora knew the rules in Mama's kitchen. She scrubbed her hands with soap. Mama dug in the cupboards and refrigerator for ingredients. She listed what they needed for the pancit. Chicken, celery, carrots, mushrooms, onions, baby corn, cabbage, ginger, garlic, soy sauce. Don't forget the noodles, said Cora. Oh yes, the noodles, said Mama. Let's get started, Mama told Cora. Open the package of rice noodles and put them in this bowl. Uh, put them in this bowl of water. Do you know why we soak them? So they get soft, answered Cora. You've been paying attention, said Mama with a wink. Cora opened the package. She plopped the big clump of noodles into the bowl. Meanwhile, Mama took out some chicken she had cooked earlier. This was Mama's special stash. She used chicken for all kinds of Filipino dishes, like tang hong, chicken curry, and lumpia. Want to help me shred? asked Mama. Cora's eyes grew wide. A grown-up job. She was ready. She pulled the chicken pieces apart the way her older sister Prim did. She placed them on a plate. Cora snuck a tiny bit of chicken. She rolled it to the back of her tongue before Mama noticed. The salty taste tickled her tongue. I'll chop, said Mama. Cora arranged the vegetables in neat rows. Mama chopped er celery sticks, carrots, cabbage, and onions. When Mama started slicing onions, tears ran down Cora's cheeks. She looked up and saw Mama's watery eyes. Onions make us cry, sang Mama. They both laughed. Mama took out her huge pansy pan with the shiny copper outside and big handles. The pan was deep enough to hold all the ingredients. Cora danced on her tiptoes to see inside. Mama asked Cora to step back while she added some oil and vegetables to the pan. The pan began to hiss and sizzle. Mama added spices too, garlic, ginger, and a splash of soy sauce. Mmm, Cora loved the smell of garlic. Can you check the noodles, Cora? asked Mama. Cora scratched her head. She tried to remember what her sister Sarah did when she checked the noodles. Cora thought she should sniff the noodles, but she picked up the bowl too quickly. Water sloshed onto the floor. Are you making a mess? asked Mama with pointy eyebrows. Silly Cora, you just need to touch the noodles with two fingers to see if they are soft. Mama laughed and handed Cora a towel to mop up the mess. Mama went to work, straining the noodles. Now for the fun part, said Mama. Let's add the noodles to the pansi pan. Can I stir? asked Cora. She knew this was another grown-up job. Yes, but be careful. Near the burner, called Mama, who pulled out a stool for Cora to stand on. Cora began to stir in a wide circle. She watched the noodles somersault over the carrots and celery. She made the soft onions sway this way and that. The smell of ginger mixing with garlic floated to her nose. 
A few mushrooms escaped from the pot. Oops. That night, Mama brought the food to the table. She set out a platter of adobo chicken, two plates of her special lumpia with dipping sauce, and a bowl of pineapple slices. Cora's brother and sisters came to the table one by one. Daddy sat in his usual spot at the head of the table. Cora watched his eyes grow wide as he checked out all the food. He licked his lips. Finally, Mama set the steaming platter of pancit in the middle of the table. You made pancit without us, hollered Cora's brother Crispin. Who did my job? asked Prim. Who checked the noodles? Sarah needed to know. Mama replied, Cora did all the grown-up jobs. Really? said Daddy. That's my girl. Cora scrunched up, uh, scrunched together her eyebrows and bit her lip while the family tasted her pancit. Did she do everything right? Would they like it? Would Mama tell about the accident with the noodles? Pretty impressive, smiled Cora's sister, Irene. Crispin chomped on a big spoonful of pancit and elbowed Cora. Not too bad, Crispin said. Cora grinned. Her eyes sparkled with delight. Daddy sat back in his chair. This tastes just like your Lolo's pancit, he said. Cora beamed with pride. Salamat, she said and cried out. Thank you. The family laughed. Cora was still wearing Mama's red apron. And that's the end of the story. But the book also contains a wonderful glossary of Tagalog words like salamat, which means thank you, mahalo, arigato, gracias. And there is Lolo's pancit recipe. So if you want to make pancit for, your, oh, for yourself, for your family, there's a recipe in this book. Uh, remember, children, uh, you, know, you should make, be making pancit with the help of adults because the stove can get pretty hot. And there are photos and profiles of Dorina K. Lazo Gilmore, the author, and Christy Valiant, the illustrator. And there are many, many wonderful books in the Kite Reader series published by Kite Press. And that was the story. That was the story, Cora Cook's Pancit. Let's go this one, sorry. The end. <laughs> Wasn't that a great story? What part did you like? Really? Sensei loved that part too. Well, I loved how Cora learned by listening to her mom. <clears throat> Cora learned uh, how to make a delicious pancit using a recipe from her Lolo, her grandfather, who taught her, who taught it to Cora's mommy. Because preparing, serving, and sharing food together as Ohana, as a family, is a wonderful way to connect with the people that we love and to reconnect with our family roots. Creating time to pass down family food traditions like making pancit, uh, pickled peaches, the perfect bao, or the best spam musubi in the whole world is the best thing that adults can share with children. How about you, Barkley? What part did you like? Well, I liked how the little dog uh, got to lick up all the noodle water when, when Cora spilled it on the floor because that made me remember the times when I was just a little rascal pup and a little boy in my family loved me most of all. We always played together and don't tell nobody now, but the little boy would pretend to drop food on the floor. <laughs> my little boy would say, oops, I dropped a piece of Spam Masubi on the floor. I'm sorry, I'll clean it up. And then I'd clean up the mess for him, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Hooey, those were the days, my friends, those were the days. <laughs> well, mahalo for sharing, Lucy and Barkley. As you grow up, you'll find that everything in this unrepeatable life changes. But your memories of sharing food together with your ohana will always be there to make you feel happy, no matter where you are. And 
Did you know that you can create happy memories for other people in your life too, just by sharing family food traditions, like Cora and her family? Isn't that wonderful? Did you know that Sensei was just like the little boy in Barkley's story? Except in my case, it was Sam the dog, who was the sweetest dog in the whole world. And it wasn't Spam Musubi, it was teriyaki chicken that my, my, my dad used to make. Oops, I dropped a piece of teriyaki chicken on the floor. I'm sorry, I'll clean it up. And then Sam the dog would clean up the mess for me. Now, I think my mom and dad knew what we were doing, uh, but they never said anything. You know, I miss Sam the dog every day, but her memory always makes me smile. Namo Amida. Mahalo, Sam the dog, for being part of my life. Namo Amidabutsu, Sam the dog, I love you. Because, you know, Sam was a good dog, and that made me want to be kind and gentle to everyone, too. Because by being kind, Sam the dog made everyone feel good. And by being lovable, Sam the dog made everyone be good. But not too much. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, y'all. See you again next week. Ahoy ho. See you again real soon. Aloha. Say, Lucy, what do you say? You and me go cook up some pancit noodles in the temple kitchen. Pancit noodles? You said the magic word. We go. Say, Lucy, did I ever tell you, oops, did I ever tell you about the time that I invented pancit noodles? Well, I didn't. Okay, well, let me tell you the story. Once upon a time, there was a little rascal pup named Barclay. One day, fade to black.